Welcome back. I'm moving on to our first segment for today, talking about COP27 taking place in Sharm el Sheikh and talking about the Egyptian strategy towards green economy. Over the phone, we have Dr. Yomna Hamaki, Professor of Economics at Shams University. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Nash. Good morning, Doctor. So, first of all, I'd like to shed the light on the green economy in general. What does it mean and how important it is? Actually, uh, green economy uh, address, is addressing, you know, uh, 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 the climate change phenomena, which means that uh, we know all that uh, uh, we witnessed for the last decades increasing in the temperature of the Earth. Uh, and this is uh, coming uh, mainly because of uh, burning fossil fuels and the emissions are affecting seriously uh, this phenomena and, you know, increasing the temperature. Uh, the increasing the temperature of the Earth uh, uh, is having severe, you know, repercussions on several things. Uh, what, we, we, what we are witnessing nowadays of, uh, uh, you know, eccentric uh, uh, climate everywhere, uh, floods, uh, uh, you know, uh, all these phenomena affecting seriously, uh, you know, the way of life, affecting the, the, uh, the way of life for most people, specifically for poor people. Uh, imagine in Bangladesh, in Africa, uh, when uh, poor people are cultivating their lands and uh, borrowing in order to cultivate their land, and then uh, once the flood is destroying uh, such uh, uh, product, you know, uh, they are becoming uh, more and more uh, poor. And from here it comes that uh, uh, this phenomenon is a global phenomenon. It's affecting every, uh, every country and every human in the earth. And from here it comes the importance of having, you know, uh, this uh, uh, a meeting uh, every year in order to discuss uh, what, uh, what we are, what, are, what is the positioning of uh, different countries regarding their uh, effort in order to address two main uh, impact of the climate change. The first one is actions taken in order to reduce fossil fuels, which we can say as mitigation, and all activities related to that are, uh, you know, uh, renewable energy. We can witness nowadays that uh, renewable energy from solar, from wind, and lately from hydrogen. So this is uh, actions of mitigation. And actually the world... Uh, uh, has witnessed uh, for the last uh, period uh, uh, concentrating uh, investment in renewable energy, which uh, may, uh, we can say that uh, we can see uh, significant progress regarding mitigation. But what is more severe and affecting seriously, you know, uh, uh, poor people and poor uh, countries like African countries is the repercussions of increasing the temperature, uh, which is, like I mentioned, uh, floods and so on. And this is what we can call adaptation. Uh, scientific research in order to see to how extent uh, the agricultural products are going to be affected by such phenomena, by increasing temperature, by floods, you know, uh, scarcity of water, all these phenomena are affecting seriously uh, developing countries and, you know, uh, actions of adaptation may help to address uh, such phenomena. So all the activities that are dealing with mitigation and adaptation can be regarded as a green economy. Uh, why? Because it's quite important to, to take into consideration the economic side, Nashua. Uh, it's not just by mentioning that I am going towards renewable energy, but to how extent I can succeed to make it feasible economically so that it could be sustainable. Because if you still, you know, support renewable energy by subsidies and so on, you can start with subsidies, but you should achieve, you know, the visibility, the economic visibility, so that to sustain such uh, uh, efforts. And this is, you know, the core of uh, uh, what we can call green economy. 
So, Doctor, uh, yes, uh, this is the beginning of um, another era or new era of green uh, economy or green investments in Egypt. So, uh, as you mentioned, uh, talking about economy in general, what's the impact of this on the Egyptian economy in particular? Actually, this is quite important for the Egyptian economy from different perspectives, taking into consideration that we are going in the right side and you know we are exerting quite effort and uh, COP27 declared a lot of activities that Egypt uh, had done during the last period in order uh, Egypt nowadays is on the uh, world map towards you know uh, uh, addressing the climate change and uh, all efforts that can be done including green economy and uh, you know one of these important activities, what we are doing nowadays regarding solar energy, we need to activate such efforts so that to economize it. And when we have the largest, uh, you know, station in Ben Ben to uh, generate electricity from solar and uh, actually trying to, uh, 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 you know, to be on the value chain of production by producing panels, you know, still uh, we haven't done it uh, properly uh, yet, but uh, we are exerting efforts towards transferring technology and uh, uh, trying to uh, economize, uh, you know, such a project. And when we know that the private sector is included in uh, such an important project, we can see that this is, can guarantee, you know, uh, uh, you know, the visibility and economic visibility. So this is from one perspective. From another, we are doing the same for wind uh, uh, energy. We are doing nowadays, we are approaching uh, intensively uh, uh, the hydrogen. And uh, in, uh, the, uh, in this uh, conference, COP27, uh, uh, this conference witnessed uh, some uh, uh, or some uh, agreements with uh, countries like, like Belgium, uh, with uh, uh, large companies in order to start, uh, uh, you know, by producing uh, hydrogen uh, in Egypt I, and paving the way towards having uh, uh, like a hub uh, in Egypt towards enhancing the visibility of producing uh, hydrogen. So now uh, we can say Egypt uh, is acting as um, a clean energy hub, right? Especially when we talk about uh, the hiking in prices of oil and gas all over the world now. Yes, you know, it's not easy to transform into uh, clean energy uh, uh, in a very short period. That's why all the plans in order to uh, try to get rid of coal, for example, and uh, uh, of uh, the conventional uh, uh, energy, uh, you know, it's taking, uh, some countries are putting to, uh, 235, uh, 2035, other 2050, you know, all uh, countries are putting their plans according to their capabilities to transfer into, uh, you know, renewable energy. It's not quite easy, but, uh, you know, since you are working hard towards achieving such a transformation and it is for the benefit of the for the benefit of the earth uh, generally speaking and for people living because we are seeing you know the impact of climate change is not just affecting uh, the way of life for people but it's affecting their health uh, you know uh, we can see that the map of uh, diseases uh, uh, is going to change completely uh, for uh, and this affecting seriously the life of people so from different perspe perspectives taking into consideration climate change uh, may be uh, uh, quite beneficial for uh, uh, you know the people and the humanity generally speaking so can we say that Egypt's uh, green uh, certification program uh, support tourism and sustainable development and attract more foreign investments in Egypt? Yes, this is quite important because uh, we need uh, to generate more investments uh, towards addressing climate change. We have uh, 
very ambitious uh, projects. And uh, I would like to shed light on, you know, uh, the initiative uh, NUAFI. Uh, you know, this initiative, the importance behind it, it it's coming from, uh, you know, different governorates in Egypt. It's not, uh, you know, planned uh, just by... Uh, from the government or uh, from offices. No, it is coming from uh, the bottom of the society. And uh, uh, when you have such a project, so it addresses such a project uh, addressing, you know, the needs of people. And uh, uh, one of the projects that is quite important and still need uh, a lot of efforts to be exerted is uh, recycling. You have a lot of West, agricultural West and uh, with from factories uh, uh, that are need, needed actually to be addressed properly on economic ways and uh, to have the visibility, economic visibility in it. And uh, as economists, we are studying quite well, uh, you know, all these projects, trying to find uh, what is the best solution to be feasible economically. And, uh, you know, uh, Nawati uh, can prove such uh, efforts done, uh, you know, because of um, this uh, initiative attracted a lot of uh, donors and international organizations to finance uh, such a project. And actually, since you have the mechanism which is addressing people and forming institutional, uh, you know, bases in order to uh, uh, to specify what are the needs of people, to all extent they can, uh, you know, recycle agricultural waste so that they can limit it from everything and they can improve the quality of life. And this can be done uh, through uh, Haya Karima, a decent light project, uh, because, you know, uh, Haya Karima is a way to, in, uh, to enhance the quality of life for the majority of people living in, uh, you know, uh, uh, villages, uh, and, uh, and we can expect to a large extent that these people that are uh, suffering from uh, shortage of uh, uh, facilities like uh, uh, sanitation services and uh, schools and all the facilities that may improve their quality of life. But when you address uh, within these poor societies, you know, how to recycle, how to uh, look to the nature, how to protect uh, such nature, I believe that this is what we need to do in order to uh, improve the awareness of people towards climate change. And I think also it uh, focused on the fact of trying or working hard on decreasing uh, water waste and uh, working on uh, water supply, right? Yes, yes, this is quite important, uh, Nashua. This is a very important topic because uh, uh, regarding, uh, you know, uh, uh, consuming water and protecting water in Egypt, Egypt witnessed, uh, you know, uh, very good efforts towards doing that. First of all, like you mentioned, uh, you know, when uh, people in these villages, they know how to use water efficiently and to consume water, I believe that uh, using renewable energy uh, can play a significant role uh, towards that. And uh, uh, we have uh, in Egypt nowadays uh, uh, a lot of projects addressing such uh, phenomena uh, from one perspective. From another, we have uh, done good efforts towards uh, water desalination and nowadays uh, we are trying to complete the value chain regarding uh, the production of uh, machines and, uh, uh, and the production of chemicals and raw materials so to complete the value chain regarding desalination of water because Egypt has done a lot of efforts uh, during the last period by uh, that cope, these efforts cope actually with the mega project because when we have the mega project in different areas uh, like uh, the expansion in Sinai, the expansion in uh, everywhere in Egypt, uh, you know, we don't have sufficient water, so we are using water dissemination. So we have nowadays a very important project of water dissemination. We are trying to economize such uh, projects so that to uh, uh, reach the maximization of utilization of uh, such projects. 
Doctor, if I'm talking about uh, the event uh, as uh, itself, COP27 taking place in Egypt, what is the impact of this great event on Egyptian economy as well? Actually, great, uh, great impact. Uh, first of all, Egypt nowadays on the world map. So this is quite important for us. Uh, uh, the second message, uh, Egypt is quite uh, good in... Uh, you know, addressing the needs of the African continent, uh, you know, representing the African continent, addressing the challenges confronting the African continent, and not only that, but to, uh, you know, propose uh, solutions, how to address such problems, and to find out projects in order to uh, implement uh, such solutions. So we are not just talking, but we are putting plans, we are specifying how these plans should be implemented, and we are trying to gather, uh, you know, uh, uh, the private sector with international organizations, with uh, the government of all the African continents, so that to find ways how to implement uh, uh, such projects in a cooperative uh, method, which means that this is, is quite important. Uh, Egypt has proved that, uh, quite successful in doing uh, such exercise. The third part is uh, regarding a meeting of all international organizations, discussing uh, different points of view. It's a very good opportunity to present investment map of Egypt uh, in order to attract investment. Uh, we know quite well that we have been, uh, we have finished uh, economic conference uh, specifying on the importance of investment and how to attract investment. So this, uh, this is a good opportunity in order to meet with uh, investors and to talk about the opportunities. And since this uh, conference, uh, uh, has been held in in uh, in, uh, in Sharm el Sheikh. This Sharm el Sheikh is uh, a very important for tourism. So it is another opportunity for enhancing tourism uh, uh, for Egypt. So a lot a lot of benefits uh, uh, from having such uh, a conference in Egypt. So also the Sharm el Sheikh now uh, we can describe it as a green uh, zone for tourism. And I think uh, this is going to be one of the most important um, elements or uh, pillars when it comes to tourism, talking about uh, green tourism as well, because we all know that the whole world is attracted and talking about ecotourism. So when we talk about green tourism, definitely this is something of great importance as well. Of course, I agree with you, and uh, Sharm el-Sheikh nowadays is a city uh, coping quite well with climate change. You can see, you uh, know, uh, electrical buses uh, existing and, uh, you know, uh, the least of emission, and uh, we, ha we have seen uh, a lot of projects to address uh, uh, climate change. So I believe that uh, this can be a very important message to the whole world since we have more than uh, 40,000, uh, uh, you know, attending such a conference. All these uh, are ambassadors to their countries to reflect the situation. And the media, international media, uh, has covered uh, intensively such uh, uh, event. So uh, I believe this is uh, quite important. What we need to do is to invest such, uh, you know, uh, conference and working hard towards, uh, you know, attracting really investment and working on uh, addressing all obstacles, uh, confronting investors and uh, concentrating on small business, you know, all these uh, recommendations that we have kept saying uh, during the last period, it needs a lot of work to be done and seriousness in uh, doing such efforts. So how do you see Egypt now uh, when we talk about a green economy map? Actually, uh, when we are talking about green economy, still a lot to be done, you know, but we have uh, uh, exerting good efforts, but still a lot to be done, taking into consideration that we are, uh, uh, you know, witnessing two uh, shocks nowadays. 
after COVID-19 and then the Russian-Ukrainian war. And still now we are in a very period of uh, a period of uncertainty uh, uh, when the, still we have the Russian war, uh, increasing uh, prices of energy affecting seriously Egypt. And, uh, you know, uh, the capability uh, to manage, you know, uh, such shocks uh, uh, despite what we are doing still uh, quite uh, needs a lot of effort from us. I can see that we are on the right uh, uh, way to do uh, our homework quite well regarding um, climate change, but we need to economize such efforts so that, uh, uh, you know, because we are in the middle of uh, economic uh, crisis nowadays, we need to produce more, we need to attract investment, we need to upgrade, um, uh, you know, uh, the productivity of our workers and uh, training. And uh, we have seen uh, during such projects that the green projects uh, are going to change the map for uh, requirements in the labor force. Uh, our educational um, uh, institutions and uh, training centers should cope with that, and uh, we are exerting effort in doing that, but still uh, we need to do more regarding how to invest on such a very important uh, conference. Right, uh, Dr. Yomna Hamaki, Professor of Economics and Shams University, thank you very much for joining us. Right, and uh, when people talk about adapting uh, to climate change, they often refer to innovations. But a research team said trade, migration and job options will also affect how individual states and countries fare over the uh, next 100 years. Uh, moving on to this uh, important feature, then we'll be back.